quick rabbit here again. So as you see, I've um, invested in some power, and um, it's a um, gasoline-driven three-phase generator. And if you want the long version of why I purchased this, then you can um, jump over the um, unboxing and the commissioning part. And I've added it to the end, so it might not be of interest to all, but maybe to some. So, um, yeah, let's see what this contains. So, anyway, this is a um, very heavy unit, so I'm not going to be able to lift it out of the box. I actually had a <laughs> big struggle to be able to lift it onto this table just to be able to demonstrate it. So I'm going to actually cut the box away from the uh, and, uh, if it turns into a horrendous mess then I will cut it out of the video and you don't have to wait around while I'm trying to struggle to open the box. But let's open it from the top first. I can't, I can't tilt it over, it's too heavy. Basically, it does smell of gasoline, so I think they've actually tested it. However, it, it shouldn't come with oil, so I'm going to have to actually check for the commissioning. But anyway, here's a little bit of an accessory bag. It actually comes with a three-phase plug, which is kind of cool. Of course, Amer uh, European slots. Gasoline, yep. It's got a full manual. Some tools included. I think this is probably being factory tested because of the smell of gasoline. I really don't want to scratch the paint because the way this is set up is the frame is very close to the. Uh, Water glass there. That would be a disaster. So, no, that'll be fine. <laughs> oh, this thing is heavy. It has been pushed around and, and transport like usually everything that you get now is. So I'm just hoping that it, it has survived. I wonder if I could. Yeah. 
I want it to fall on me. I'll be probably pretty much on the way to the hospital. Okay, so now I'm just going to pause the video for a while because I'm going to have to try and. Um, wow! Pollen! <laughs> Okay, be back when I've got rid of, rid of the box. Yeah, so I'm, I'm getting there. Just have to throw the rest of the box out because it really smells quite bad. And there's quite a, quite a lot of pollen came with it. So, anyway, so far so good. Um, this styrofoam, whatever it was trying to support, it obviously hasn't been supporting much because it took lots of, ah, well, lots and lots, quite a lot of different styrofoam bits out of it. I, I can't see anything directly damaged. And, um, off a different source. Oh, the petrol tank is dry, so I don't know where the petrol smell is coming from. Because it really stank of petrol, and I actually threw out the box. But I can't see any leak. The petrol tank pipe seems to be going down, is it? As it should. Into the carburetor. I see. Gasoline only, do not use diesel. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, probably not a good idea to use diesel. So, anyway, so now we get uh, it's out of the package. Um, still got, I don't know where where this was stored and or transported. Oh, it's just a heap load of pollen on it. So, that's done. But anyway, here we see it, so um, uh, I'm going to have to go through the instructions a bit to see. Uh, it's got some legs for them, so I think they have to screw the legs on. And actually, if I'm going to demonstrate this, I'll probably actually put the legs on, because then I can actually turn it a bit. I don't want to turn it on, the, on, on here now, because it's just going to scrape the tables. So I'll put the legs on. So anyway, I got the feed on. Um, didn't find a page in the instructions where it says they even existed, but there are four holes on the cross beams underneath. <laughs> it wasn't wasn't super easy to get them on, but I, I have them on. Um, and by the way, I think this you can order a um, a wheel kit for this and a car car a sort of wheelbarrow like handles for, for this. So I think there's there's lots of holes underneath there, so I think you, you, you can bolt on wheels. Also, I mean, it means you can bolt this to, to anything you want. You can, you can have your own platform. But anyway, this is how it looks now, and um, just to take a quick, now I got rid of most of the um, pollen which was collected here. 
And um, anyway, so we have the single phase outputs here. We have a amp meter, and then we have a trip switch here, uh, overload protection. As I, far as I understand it, it, it can trigger off a single phase based on what the how much amps are going through there. But I'm going to have to read up on this protection circuit. Um, or is it, uh, it could be that it's based on um, power output. So that when it goes over a certain limit, then um, it triggers. And then you have the three, three phase up. Uh, and then of course, this is European standard. So if you, uh, if you buy it in the US, then you have yeah, more US market specific outputs. And then you have here, you have a key. Key, so you have off, uh, on, and start. And since this hasn't got a um, electrical starter, so I'm assuming you put it in start to be able to pull the lever, lever to, to start it. I was thinking of... Um, oh man, this thing's heavy. So here's the end part. So this is the start lever like a lawnmower. And then you have to remember to put the gasoline on. And then you have to put the switch on. Of course, I'll read the instructions to, to see how, how that um, goes exactly. It has a good warning note here. It says, feeling fuel before starting the engine is forbidden. <laughs> yeah, good translation. <laughs> It means that don't fill fuel while it's running, of course. You shouldn't do that when it's running. Oh, they're trying to turn it around. I'd like to show this outside without it dropping off the tail. Ah, ah. So, now we have the, the... So that's the engine carburetor air intake and this is the generator air and then the generators behind it and then the exhaust comes out the end so here you have this hole the exhaust out so so far so good so the next phase is to um read the instructions and move this a little bit closer to where it's actually going to be used and I need to really double check if you need to add oil which is and I'll be yeah we'll go we'll go through that one get there so check that the, if it needs to be filled with oil I th think it should need to be filled with oil I actually have oil for it so, so anyway instruction moving and then next phase so anyway moved it out to the workshop. Got it on this um, moving platform with wheels on it. So so I haven't really decided where this will permanently sit. I might actually end up making a set of separate enclosure for it. We'll see. But for now it can just sit there. So anyway, first we need to inspect the oil level. And then in there's the oil information, so to ensure that it actually has oil in it. It's still unclear if it was delivered with oil or not. And here's a weird thing that the cover seems to have been removed here. So I think we need to actually take that cover off the machine to get up the oil filling plug. So here we are. So it's the this panel that needs to be removed. So I'll just get that done. So, we got the access to the filler cup, filler cup. So, let's see. A piece of paper.
some markings on it so it's like high and low. scenario I'm going to actually have to buy a um, small little pump thing. We'll see. So anyway problem solved it seems like the this is the oil I'm gonna use and it actually comes with a extractable filler ho hose. So that's actually nice. Somewhere. This is one liter, so it's 0 0.6 liters. <laughs> it was a bit too aggressive. to clean up 
little tap done. I've got to wipe the front once more. But anyway, my mistake. I am pressed, put pressure on the oil canister, and I think it filled it like a tidal wave, and then the tidal wave came back and dumped the axis oil all over the place. So one should actually probably just take it slower than what I do. It's probably the solution not to get that back fit, not back tidal wave. But anyway, nearly there. I'll just put the cover on us. So, time for some petrol. I'm done. What I thought is I'd um, fill in up a little bit without opening the um, petrol valve and then just leave it for a while and see if there are any general leaks like if this tank got damaged in, in transport. And um, the fuel I'm going to use is a little bit special for our region, but I think you can probably get it. I mean, the idea with this is it's a little bit more refined um, four-stroke um, gasoline, so it should creates a little bit less environmental impact, soot and smoke and stuff. <laughs> well, but it's horribly expensive, so if you were running this for industrial usage, then of course you wouldn't use this, you'd use the same stuff in your car. But since I'm going to be running this for yeah, maker hobby purposes, then um, I can very much use this stuff. film that and then <laughs> check that the filter is pretty clean. this away so it doesn't stink up. And close the cap. And the fuel valve is closed. I'm just going to leave it now. For maybe like 15 minutes or so, and then I'm just going to start to smell around a little bit and check underneath and see there's no general leaks. So it's been standing for about 15 minutes and I just checked around it. There's no gasoline smell anywhere and I can't see any, any gasoline on the, on the floors. So anyway, next thing is to open up the gets on film but here's the instructions so you have it off and then down is on so I'm gonna put it on now and see if we get any leaks again around the carburetor the location nope no leaks maybe a little tiny smell of gasoline but you kind of expect it if it gets a little bit into the carburetor I would expect to get a little tiny smell plus I moved it so but there's no evidence of any dropping. So what I'll do now is I'm going to shut that off again. And then I'm going to um, fill in some more gasoline and then I probably can try and start it. So, it's all gassed up and ready to go. So, just getting prepared to start it. So, choke needs to be off. to be moved to the on position.
camera won't pick it up. But it is 220 thousand watts across the ramp.
Google first. first run done. Seems to start okay and then it was totally my mistake with the with the um, with the lever. It's actually um, the choke lever is here and I was looking for it up here and I forgot it was done. That's why I created so much smoke. So when you get it started then you should open it up. Anyway, it seems to produce voltage, I'm not 100% sure it's really clean 50 hertz, but it seems to be able to power at least 2000, something like 2200, 2300 watts resistor, so, and, uh, yeah. So, why did I decide to get a generator? Well, it's, um, bit complicated but um, I live in a region where each house basically we do get three phase power 230 volts and um, I have main fuses they're 16 amps so that's three times 16 amps and if you come from the North America where you're more prone to have single phase delivery on 120 volts then you would think oh this is fantastic why, why on earth would you need to invest in in some other power source. There's a few reasons behind this. Um, the internal wiring in this house, this was built 1980s, is um, 10 amps. So every every sub-circuit is limited to 10 amps. Uh, so there there is no three-phase outlets and there is no 16 amp outlets in this house. And um, the other thing is that I have um, lots of electronics. I'll get to this later why this is a problem. I have lots of computers and, and networking equipment and servers and stuff connected to um, the power network. And now we've also invested in an electrical hybrid car which also charges for off that same network or electrical supply. So that um, reduces the energy or the power budget that one would have to use. Now if one looks at the usage scenarios that I have, um, I would like to expand into in um, you know, the tech, tech sphere is that I'd like to build, my, build out my, um, my tooling to be able to handle um, fabrication. And that means of course introducing different types of um, welding solutions or welding techniques and um, things like plasma cutting. And also I'd like to possibly play around with um, yeah, things that need rotating engines, electrical engines, and that requires quite often that one has a um, three-phase power. So I'm basically trying, uh, I, I kind of thought about extending the wiring in the house to the workshop, three-phase, 16 amps, but then the cost of that is um, turned out to be quite high, and it do still doesn't solve the power budget problem with my, um, uh, you know, having to charge the hybrid every day and, and um, also the issue is that different types of welding equipment, they create quite a lot of disturbances into the network. I mean, I know they're not supposed to, but the cheap stuff that I'm buying, I wouldn't guarantee that they wouldn't send nasty spikes into the um, electrical network. And if that electrical network is my house network and I've got all the computing equipment and servers and and, and, um, and now a car connected to it, I really just absolutely do not want to um, have, my, have that welding um, um, just, yeah, electrical disturbances going into the network. Um, 
when it comes to sizing generators, I've read quite a few articles about what size of a generator you would need for different types of welding equipment. And um, the reality seems to collide with theory because the you, you would like you would probably need to have like a uh, 10 kilowatt generator <laughs> three <laughs> dedicated on, on a single phase network to be able to actually handle all possible scenarios of welding. And then on the other hand, I've watched so many videos about people um, running welding equipment of all different categories and including plasma cutting uh, remotely off-site on, on very small um, generators. So I, I kind of combined the theoretical approach to sizing the generator for my needs, plus having a look at some practical videos where I actually spied up um, what people were running the equipment off of, as far as I could see it. So I selected this one. It's um, a relatively cheap solution. Uh, this 8,500 watt is uh, considered peak power, so it's actually um, six thousand. Six and a half kilowatts that you can get out of this. Continue ah theoretically continues. Um, you know since it's not the most expensive unit, I don't know. We'll see. We're going to put it through its paces, and we're going to see when it starts tripping the internal so protection circuits. Let's see how far we can go. So anyway, that's um, a little bit about why I decided to buy a generator and the background to that, and then a little bit about the approach I took to the to sizing it. And I hope this is useful for other people thinking about. It. And um yeah, as I said, it, it has act you, you can it has a three phase outlet and then it has single phase outlets three. So it's um, and then it also has a twelve volt output for DC. And um, so I think it's actually quite um, manual start, so no no electrical start. So. <laughs> that I had to give up just to get the price. So, oh, anyway, that was the extent of demonstrating. So, I'm setting up for first use and I'll get started. I'm starting up, shut it down. And there's a pity about this choke that I was trying to fiddle with it here when it's choking. It was actually down here. So that also caused all that smoke, so that's my fault. But anyway, if you thought this video was worth it, um, consider giving it a like. If you'd like to see more usage of this, then I'll be including it in my projects upcoming. So uh, consider subscribing, and uh, see you in the next one.